New research from the Pew Institute shows that 82% of Americans now have an unfavorable view of China. The report goes on to state that throughout the world, more countries view China in a negative way, and all of it can be linked back to a single event that happened in 2013 that caused this huge shift in public opinion the rise of Xi Jinping as China's president. But what if I told you there is a big error in this report and like most traditional Western media, it's not telling the entire story. One thing that's important to remember is that when Western media refers to the world, it's usually just referring to this graph. In the eyes of most American politicians, this is what the world looks like, the US and its closest allies. But what about Latin America? Africa, the Middle East, Asia, do they share the same fear Americans do about China? Well, let's do some research and break it all down in today's video. Today's video is sponsored by my loyal Patreon supporters. If you would like to be part of the community and receive exclusive access to member-only content, come and join our team today. The timing of this new report is incredibly important to understand. China is just weeks away from handing Xi Jinping his unprecedented third term as president, and it's upsetting a lot of American political analysts. I had to make a video earlier this week about the rumor of a potential coup in China because too many people were wishing for the worst to happen. It's not hard to do some research and see what other countries around the world think. Look at this Bloomberg article from June 2022, which highlights that China has surpassed the US in the eyes of young Africans. A survey of 4,500 young Africans across 15 countries found 76% believe China was a positive influence on their lives. While well, youth in Africa noted that China provides affordable goods and invest in infrastructure, something that the United States foreign policy has lacked significantly. The respondents of the survey were between the ages of 18 to 24, and this is important to note as Africa is the world's youngest continent and has a tremendous amount of potential in the future. Take Nigeria, for example, which has the highest birth rate in the world and is forecasted to overtake China in population by the end of the century. Let me repeat that. By 2100, Nigeria is expected to be the second most populated country in the world with an estimated 791 million people. Africa is going to be increasingly important in the future of our world, and maybe now we can begin to understand why China is investing so heavily in Africa's future. How about the Middle East and Arab countries? Well, in a similar survey targeting Arab youth, this poll indicates that among non-Arab countries, China is seen as their top ally, followed by Turkey and then Russia. And this is the danger when we listen exclusively to American media. Let's go back to that graph displaying the world, and it's almost identical to which countries are supporting the sanctions on Russia. In this Bloomberg article from August, we see that the U.S. drive to isolate Russia and China is falling short. The United States will always demand its closest Western allies follow suit and join in whatever decision America thinks is best for the world. But to truly understand what is happening in geopolitics around the world, we must remove ourselves from this American bubble and take into consideration every continent around the world. A couple months ago, I analyzed why most Latin American countries are choosing China over the United States. It's quite simple. When the U.S. comes into Latin America, we overthrow democratically elected leaders, we install coup governments, and we build military bases. The United States foreign policy is always America first. And as American diplomat Henry Kissinger once said, America has no permanent friends or enemies, only interests. When China arrived in Latin America, they began building infrastructure and securing pathways to increase trade. In the past five years, we've seen Panama, El Salvador, the Dominican Republic, and Nicaragua all drop diplomatic relations with Taiwan and instead switch their allegiance over to China. This trend is alarming U.S. politicians as the White House would prefer to see Taipei keep its alliances in the region. But what's the reason for the switch? It's actually simple and something I discuss frequently on this channel. At the end of the day, it all comes down to trade. If you are a local farmer in a developing Latin American country, being able to sell your products to a market like China is a game changer for your family and it will guarantee you a better future in life. But let's go back to this Pew Institute survey and do a little bit of exploring. In this graph, Pew is telling us that across Europe and North America, translation, the United States and those who support the U.S. military, there is little confidence that Xi Jinping is doing the right thing regarding world affairs. But on the same graph at the bottom, there are two outliers worth mentioning. Malaysia and Singapore clearly think the opposite. Nearly 70% of Singaporeans have a lot of confidence in Xi Jinping's foreign policy. Things are not always as they appear, and it's important to read between the lines. In the West, we are taught that China is supporting Russia in their war against Ukraine simply because 
China has not joined Western sanctions against Russia. In reality, the situation is very different. China has not sanctioned Russia for the simple reason that sanctions don't work. The United States wanted to crush Russia's currency with sanctions, but who would have thought that one of the best investments you could have made in this year would have been to buy a Russian ruble in March 2022. If you made that investment, it would have resulted in a 150% profit if you sold that just a few weeks ago. But China once again surprised the world when Xi met with Putin a couple weeks ago in Uzbekistan. In this Bloomberg article, we learned that Xi did not give full support to Putin's war in Ukraine and that the Russian president quickly discovered that his relationship with China does indeed have limits. Let's not forget that China is one of the few countries in the world that maintains economic relations with both Russia and Ukraine. China will continue to work with both countries, but most likely they are in the same camp as the rest of us around the world and would like to see a conclusion to this war happen sooner rather than later. As we conclude this video, here are the important takeaways to understand. Yes, it's true that the United States and its closest military allies have a growing unfavorable view of China, but this survey is completely biased as it was only conducted amongst countries that reside in the global north. Those are the countries that are indicated in blue. Let's make that clear again. Not a single nation from the global south. Those countries, highlighted in red, was asked to participate in this survey. The world does not look like this. In fact, here is a better illustration for you to clearly see what our world really looks like. Again, we have to remove ourselves from this American bubble and just the U.S. and its closest military allies. In addition, we can't forget the hundreds of millions of dollars the U.S. government is spending every year to combat the influence of China globally. But you may be asking yourself, why does U.S. foreign policy act like this? Well, it's actually quite simple. In this graph, we learned that almost every American think tank advising U.S. foreign policy are funded by weapon manufacturers. This isn't going anywhere soon, and we will only see more and more rhetoric around China being the biggest threat to the future of our world. But like I showed you in today's video, take reports with a grain of salt and do your own research. Stay informed and stay curious. The world is a big place, and the goal with this channel is to promote more countries working together to make our world a better place for future generations. Now, if you've made it to this point in the video, hit that subscribe button, and like I mentioned at the beginning, this channel is 100% funded by you, my loyal supporters. Come and join our team on Patreon, or if you prefer, I've also recently launched a new YouTube membership. Join either one and receive some exclusive benefits from me, and I thank you for your amazing support and look forward to seeing you all in a future video soon.